This is the second part of the most expensive mailbag. Today you will see the less expensive stuff. Let's continue. Small one, just cables. I mentioned it already in another video. I buy, I buy a few sizes of different prefabricated cables that I have all of them available when I need them because these JST cables are quite handy, but you have to have the right one if you want to connect it to your device. So these are pH and uh, with a 2.0 distance between pins. And I thought I create a small overview for you because I, all, I am also sometimes a little bit um, confused. We have usually five different uh, JST connectors, SH, GH, ZH or CH, P PH and XH. And you see it starts at one millimeter pin distance, 1.25, 1.5, two millimeters and 2.5 millimeters. And the maximum, oh, mistake here. Maximum current is from 0.7 to one ampere. And here the bigger ones, of course, support more two to three ampere. So I will create a link in the description that you can also download this small overview it might help you in uh, choosing the right connector. What I do is usually I package them like that with a, with a rubber band and uh, with a small description here. And here are the male parts or the female parts probably. I'm not sure what it is. It has a male and a female part here, but it's just the, the contrary to uh, the cables. So I have everything together and I will now package also these pH. These are CH which is 1.5 millimeter and I wrote it down here too. If you don't want to search, you have to have some order. Next one. These are small ESP32 boards from TTGO. They have a USB, USB to serial adapter. They have a battery connection, battery management and lots of pin broken out. I think this will be my standard platform for my projects if I do not need a display for example because they are quite small and uh, they should replace the Wemos D1 Mini if I want to use an ESP32. The only thing is they do not have a shielded board but so far I do not sell them so I don't care too much about this FCC specification and they have also a switch for the battery but they have no they do not come with uh, battery connectors, so I'm glad I bought a few of them. These are JST GH. I think I bought a package of two, four, five. Next one. Next one, a big one, and it looks like Banggood packaging. Two different things. First, this one here. Soldering tip for TS100. For people who do not know what the TS100 is, this is a small and a very good soldering iron. You have to first unscrew or loosen this screw a little bit and then you can tear the heating element and the solder, the soldering iron out and replace it by another one. Most of the professionals do not like this shape. So I bought a few other shapes. This one, for example, is quite a heavy shape. And this one is even heavier. The third one is quite smaller. I have now a choice of four different irons with one soldering station in a way. And uh, where did I get the tip for these different shapes? Louis Rossman said once which he prefers and this was his selection. This is why I ordered it. By the way, I leave a link. I tested once this TS100 and compared it with different other soldering irons. And this one was extremely fast. And this is because it has an integrated design, the tip and the heating element is completely integrated. So these kind of soldering irons are called the modern soldering irons compared to the old ones where you can replace the soldering, the tip alone, but the 
heat connection here is not as good as it is here. In general, this is the better choice than this principle here. This is the second thing. Wow, very nice, very nice. This is a brushed motor, 540 slash ATT. And this is the controller which comes with it. They, sh they seem to be quite strong. I only ordered one. Of course, I will need two if I want to drive a vehicle with that, but I was not sure if it fits. You get many different variants of, this, uh, of these motors, so I just ordered one to play around a little bit and then order probably uh, a second one or the ones I need. They look quite nice here, nice color. So this seems to be a beast, 60 ampere versus current 320 ampere. Next one, you have an idea what this is. High power something and probably high voltage or something. 28 kilohertz or 40 kilohertz. This one is 40 kilohertz and 100 watts. But this is not alone. It belongs to this one here. Specialist amongst you know what this, uh, what this is. This is a ultrasonic transdu uh, transducer. 60 watts, if I remember right. I was asked a few times if it is possible to transfer ultrasonic through water, for example, and I found some stuff that uh, it is possible with quite high power. So this is now much higher power than the normal ultrasonic. Like this one or this one. Here you have the transmitter and here you have the re receiver. And this for sure is uh, usable for uh, as a transmitter. I don't know if it is also usable for a receiver, but maybe I will use something like that as a receiver and this only as a transmitter. This is more a long-term project because it, I assume it will need some tinkering with this, that, uh, that this will work. We will see. Next one is also a small one. This is a wire stripper. Now you might ask why I use the cheapest one available or the simplest one available. It's probably not the cheapest because this best brand is a little bit more expensive than the cheapest, but f the principle is very simple. And um, some people use this very complicated one. I thought because it's automatic and stuff like that, this is a good thing, but I hate it. It does not work for, uh, for my purpose. The results are not exact and uh, Usually it does not work. You, you have to adjust it every time you, you, you select a different uh, wire and so on. It's uh, useless. I don't, I just have it here to show what not to buy. But this was my current wire stripper and it went from 22 to 10 AWG, which is perfect for the bigger wires. But I also use quite often wires up to 30 AWG. And this is why I wanted to have a second one. It starts at 20 and ends at 30 AWG. So with this one, you really have to choose the right diameter and then you get extremely good results. Very simple, very useful tool. If you select the right diameter of the hole, the plastic is cut nearly 360 degrees and you can quickly remove it. If you do not know the width, Start with a too big hole. Most other strippers cut the plastic on shorter distances and you have to tear the rest apart. If you only do Arduino projects and so on, then it's probably this one is the better, the better choice. Next one, very light. 
a second one of my favorite ESP32 boards for development and uh, the reason is it has a, a huge old USB connector. I still like these connectors, you, can't, you cannot break them, you do not have to pay attention, they are very very rigid. And I wanted to have a second one because sometimes you have two different roles, maybe a transmitter and a receiver and then you need two of them. Or to compare something you sometimes also need two of them. And finished. This one I got from a viewer who wanted to say thank you for my work and uh, it is a RAC 811 tracker. 868 megahertz, so it has to do with LoRa, I assume. This is a GPS antenna, interesting module, quite small, with two SMA connectors, and it has a LoRa Rack 811 LoRa module with all the stack for LoRaWAN included, and here we have a U-Blox GPS receiver. So one antenna is for GPS and the other one is for LoRa. And if we have a look at the systems diagram, we see here the RAC811 with a SX1276 LoRa chip and an STM processor in one module. Here we have the U-Blox GPS system with the antenna and here we have a accelerator and, mov and, and movement a detector, so it should be possible to trigger this module if it moves. It has also a battery management system here that this is a self-contained tracker. Quite an interesting product and I will try it out in one of the next videos. It comes with a LoRa antenna and some other cables. And here the normal test on, of the seriosity of the suppliers, I test their antenna. And it's written 868 MHz, but we have to pay attention. It is a reverse polarity antenna, which is very rare. And this is why we have to take a adapter, which changes the polarity. interesting behavior. It resonates at about 1040 megahertz. has a straight resonance here, so it's more or less useless at 860. 868 is here. It's a VSWR of about 5. You see the value of such a device if you work with antennas. You cannot trust your suppliers. Even if they print 868 megahertz, on the antenna, it does not work at all on this frequency. Just to show you that I do not cheat here, this small antenna is a 868 megahertz antenna and it really resonates very, very close to 868. The device is okay. This antenna is not okay. This is the end of this two-part mailbag. Thank you for your comments on the first part. I know now that I have to hurry up to learn how to use my SDR and LiDAR toys. Bye!